Hello, friend, and welcome back to The Jabril Show. I am your host, Jabril Youssef, and we're coming to you live and on time from Milwaukee, Wisconsin. This is going to be our last show here. I am heading out this week for Los Angeles, traveling through St. Louis, Oklahoma City, Albuquerque. I'll be spending some time in those places to, um, you know, to kind of offset the cost of traveling as much as I can and to see a little bit of something new as always. But we're gonna be there. We'll be back out west. Uh, it'll be first, second week of January. So super excited for that. Super excited to see what this time in Los Angeles will bring my way. And I hope that you will uh, be here with me for the journey. I would love to have you along for the ride. This week, goodness, it was a doozy for me. I had a bit of an interesting experience Thursday morning. I have been, you know, going around from coffee shop to coffee shop, different places while I've been here in the mornings to do some work, take a break, find another spot in the afternoons. And uh, Thursday morning, I happened to be in this spot called uh, the Daily Bird. It's a new cap, relatively new cafe since COVID popped up in Milwaukee's River West neighborhood. Uh, and it was part of, uh, it's in the location that a shop called the Fuel Cafe that we used to go to for years when we were growing up, um, used to be. Fuel used to be there, it closed during COVID. You know, so I've spent countless hours, maybe even days in this location before. Granted, it was a different space, but it was somewhere that I felt at home. I grew up in this neighborhood and, you know, those are things that you can't take away from someone or at least, you know, hopefully you can't. Some people might try, but uh, ended up that on this morning, you know, I've been in the shop already for about an hour. I uh, went to use the restroom. I'm literally taking a shit and, you know, I uh, sitting on the toilet, enjoying my time, scrolling through my phone, doing what we all do, right? I might have spent a little, you know, been in there a little long, 30, 35 minutes or so. And uh, right at the end, right as I'm finishing up, like literally wiping my ass and washing my hands, I, someone outside like starts knocking on the door and they have a, you know, one of those like, foggy glass windows too. I can see him like putting his ear up to the door. Like it was kind of weird. And I'm like, what's going on? You know, I've had this happen once or twice before in public where people knock on the door when you're in the bathroom. And I like, honestly, it bugs me a little. I think it's a little rude. Um, you know, it's just like, just try the door. And if it's locked, like clearly there's someone in there and just, just wait your turn, you know, let them do their thing. This was not the only restroom available in the place. So I come out and the guy goes, you know, I'm sorry about that. Like sometimes we have people in there using drugs, you know, I didn't want you to overdose. And I'm like, yeah, okay. You know, I get it, but still like you're all up in my space and you don't need to be, you don't know me. I don't do drugs. I'm not that kind of person. Like, you know, you don't have to be responsible for me. And then I see this guy walk outside and light up a cigarette. And here is where I went wrong because I should have just kept my mouth shut, but it was too good of an opportunity for me to pass up. So I walk over there, I open the door and I go, you do realize the irony of you being worried about me overdosing in the bathroom and you're, you literally come outside and immediately light up a cigarette. And he goes, no, I, I don't get it. And I'm like, you're the one who's actually killing yourself. Now to be fair, I have been a smoker. Heck, maybe I am a smoker. And maybe that's just something that I need to accept because 
let me tell you, later this day, I went out and bought myself my first pack in a while and smoked a couple of those bad boys because what happened afterwards is essentially uh, this guy and another gentleman out there who was smoking too, you know, they say, we don't want you around. You can, you know, we're, you can leave. And I said, no, I don't have to leave. Like, I'm not bothering anyone. Like, I, I understand. I said something a little, you know, out of the ordinary, maybe a little, you know, offensive towards you. But why do I have to go? What am I doing wrong? Well, they wouldn't let it go. And they came inside. One of the guys eventually identified himself as the owner. And, uh, you know, said, so we need you to leave. I'm over there by the window, not giving anybody any trouble trying to get back to my work. They won't leave me alone. So eventually, you know, the guy who was knocking on the door calls me a piece of shit. I go, I understand you feel that way. But listen, I haven't been disrespectful to you at all. I still don't understand why I need to leave. The guy who identified himself as the owner comes over, grabs my bag, my, my leather bag with all my stuff in it, just car carrying my computer, walks to the door, starts walking to the door with my bag. Again, should have just stayed put. I go over to get my bag, of course. He uses it as an opportunity to grab me, put me out the door, say, we don't want you here, and literally throw me to the curb. Then, old boy, who was knocking on the wind, on, on the, the bathroom door, comes out and grabs me again. And he's trying to throw me around and, you know, do something. Like, yikes. So, the they call the police. Uh, I separate from, you know, someone kindly enough, goes inside, grabs my stuff, brings it out. I call the police, because from my point of view, I've been assaulted. And, uh, you know, the cops come and they talk to both of us. And, uh, you know, after, after sharing from my perspective what happened, they go, you know, what, what do you want to do? I say, I want to press charges. I've never said that before in my life. But, you know, I just felt like I don't want anybody else fucking with me. I don't need people fucking with me. And I was just in this shop trying to do my business, trying to just move throughout the day. And, you know, getting people butting their heads in. And yeah, I was a little out of line. I should have just let it rest. Sometimes I can't resist poking that bear. Um, but they, you know, they said, oh, well, that's if that's the case, you're going to get a ticket for disorderly conduct. And I'm like, oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. So, like, I don't got time for that. Just drop this whole thing. Well, it was, uh, you know, I, I I took it in stride, I think, as well as I could. But uh, something that definitely delayed the beginning of my day. Uh, I ended up immediately afterwards locking my keys in the car uh, while it was running. And I had to get a, uh, a locksmith to come by. So it was an interesting start to the day. It didn't end up ruining my day for sure. Learned a lot as usual. I don't plan for that to ever happen again because I'm just going to mind my own damn business and just get away. Get away. It's not harm if you don't let it get to you. Today's show is brought to you by Jabril Yourself, my 30-day personal development and accountability curriculum made to jumpstart your body, mind, and soul. This is something that you can do in less than 30 minutes a day. You might not believe it, but I'm not a very regimented person either. And this is something that I had to create in order to regiment my life a little bit. Life is littered with uncertainty. And it, so for me, it's so important to have this space to myself where I can sit with myself every day. I have that certainty of, listen, no matter what else happens today, I have this time. And that's been so important for me. I would like 
for you to come in on the process. I would love for you to join me on this journey of self-betterment and exploration. If you're interested, please reach out to us at jabrilyousef at gmail.com and put Jabril yourself in that subject line. Brittany Griner is coming home, but goodness, the U.S. got fleeced on this one. Yeah, you heard me right. We got her back, but what did we give up? A Russian arms dealer. Well, that's a fair trade, isn't it? And goodness, it's like you think Russia might have had this in mind from the get-go. The lesson I've learned is that if you're a high profile American traveling in hostile countries, be careful about what you're doing. Follow the laws. Yes, laws are ridiculous. But like Jesus, Jesus said, give to Caesar what is Caesar's. Lock your shit down. <coughs> Please be safe. I want to thank you for all of the support that you have so graciously offered up to our LGBTQ friends in East Africa. It has made such a difference. $1,700. We have raised $1,700 since the beginning of this year. It's gone to help with food, medical services, rent, you name it. Those things that really are basic to so many of us that we don't even think about. Well, except for maybe the medical part. Get on that universal health care, United States. But um, yeah, just so we're so glad that we've had the opportunity to help out our friends who just don't have what we need and we are praying that you can continue your support whether that's being able to ask if you can dig into your pocketbook this week or if you can share this video or the link in the description with your friends family church groups political organizations it helps so much, and we cannot do this without you. What has the fashion industry been smoking? If you haven't heard, you've most likely been hiding under a rock. Balenciaga, the luxury fashion brand supported by celebrities like Kim Kardashian, Kanye West, and many others, is under fire for a couple photo campaigns, marketing campaigns uh, from this year, one earlier this year and one more recent featuring children, BDSM and other sexualizing products. And the second campaign which included court documents from a Supreme Court ruling that kind of blurred the lines between CP and art. You'll hear me say CP a few times in this video, and it does not stand for colored people. So uh, please do the math in context of this situation uh, and you know, we'll, we'll all get out on the other side, hopefully mostly unscathed. Uh, this second campaign also included some strange, strange books, um, books from authors, uh, artists, let's put that in quote, uh, that that dig into some really 
violent, uh, grotesque, and some might even say demonic in imagery. Uh, one of these books, it's, you know, it's been rolling around the internet. It's got paintings of children with blood all over them and body parts and, you know, them possibly engaging in cannibalism or playing with these. It's, it's all stuff that is extremely disconcerting. And to find these little Easter eggs, if we want to call it that, you know, these hidden messages or symbols in these campaigns is, is so disturbing when they're, you know, when it's taken all together. Uh, the fashion industry has been known to blur the lines when it comes to these issues. And you've got to wonder, where is this coming from? What is the point? Was this something that was intentional? It seems more than likely it would have to be based on the staging of the photos with the children in it and the other one with these vague references, books in the background, a half a page of a Supreme Court document from this ruling uh, that essentially said that nude images of children are not considered CP if there isn't anything obscene about them. What are we to make of all of this? Is this something that the executives at Balenciaga, that the, the leadership of this well-known fashion brand endorse? Is this what they're about? Is it a child predator who's involved in the creative of these campaigns? Winking at their friends? Laughing in the face of the public? Saying, I can get away with this and even feed maybe subliminal images, messages into your life that make my lifestyle more acceptable to you? Like, what is it? Is it someone behind the scenes putting these things in there to start a conversation about this topic? And I will say, I don't know, my mind is baffled here. I will say, I think it's a good thing that we're having the conversation. We really need to get down to who was involved in this. I mean, we know the photographers that were involved in both of these campaigns. That seems to me, while one of the photographers had some content on their, their Instagram that, you know, maybe wasn't completely uh, benign. I would say, you know, based on their statement, uh, it, make, it seems to make sense that the photographers didn't have a lot of creative control over this, you know, that they were brought in, they do the photo, they light it, they photograph it, there was someone who designed these campaigns. Who was, who was it? Who was it who said, I think, I think it's a good idea to put these books in the background here. 
we're gonna explicitly take a photo. And this was a collaboration with Adidas. We're gonna take a photo of, you know, one of these Balenciaga Adidas bags on top of a desk. And one of the things that we can see is part of the page of this document. Who was it that decided it was a good idea to have children in images, in sometimes strange and compromising poses, either holding or with teddy bears that had have BDSM gear on them. And let's be clear, you know, sex, I get it, sex sells, sex is a part of life, hopefully part of all of our lives. You know, it's, it's one of the beautiful parts of life. Hopefully it can be beautiful. Um, but conflating children and sexual acts is, is a line, you know, that's somewhere we don't go. And I will say it's not, I don't believe partisan or in any way, you know, some people try to conflate the LGBTQ and, and trans conversation with this issue. I, I don't do any of that. This is its own issue and we can and must condemn CP, condemn obscene, even suggestive images of children. I know I am, I am an artist and I don't even know about this. You know, it doesn't make sense at all. You know, think about the case of maybe a mother who's an artist and photographs her one, two, three-year-old children. I think this was actually an episode of like SVU one time. You know, what, what happens there? Because the children were, were, were not photographed with their consent. What's the line here? Should we have any images of naked children? Or is that, is that completely a no-go zone? I might ascribe to that position. Back to the issue here though, is that someone who was coordinating these campaigns had high level access to be able to either explicitly do what they did or to do it without anyone else knowing. We need to know who was that person? Who were these people? What was this room where these decisions were made? because presumably someone had the idea, but then there were other people in that room who had to approve it or release there for the process. Why did no one say no? And in fact, on that note, why did these photographers not speak up? Why did they not refuse to do the shoots? It makes you wonder whether everyone just thinks it's okay until they get caught. Because let's be very clear, this is sick. There are a lot of things that have gray area. And let me tell you, as someone who's non-binary, this is a part of my life. I don't look at things in an either or way. But this is a situation, this is a uh, topic that does not have gray area. Our children are our most valuable, precious assets. Our job is to bring them safely into a world where they can 
thrive and give their gift to the world and hopefully make us all better in the process. If they become mere objects for fetishization and pleasure, if they become, uh, you know, again, just like recipients of harm, because there are people out there who have delusions and sick urges, or maybe they just tell themselves, oh, it's just a different kind of attraction. No, that shit is weird. And I'm a believer that children can make a lot of decisions for themselves, that they can, that they have a more of an ability to make affirmative choices for themselves than we give them credit for. But sexually, children cannot give consent. Let me be honest, it's even questionable sometimes when you have older folks working with younger people who are above the age of 18. You know, I'm talking sexual relationships. You can get predatory real quick. Because when you're young, your brain is forming. You haven't had all the experiences that those of us who have been here longer have. And because of that unknowing, you can be easily influenced unless you've been given a solid bedrock of self-esteem, knowledge and awareness of your body and your ability to say no, to, in, to, to engage in experiences that you enjoy and not engage in, in experiences that make you feel yucky or that you don't want to be a part of, it can be very easy to influence young people to be what we want them to be rather than help nurture and grow them into who they're meant to be. This is serious. We need to know where this dark energy is originating from. And we need to know the conduits that it's passing through unchecked. Because there is no way that people who have such sick ideas and designs should be allowed to move so freely, to communicate so broadly, and to have such unfettered access to our most vulnerable citizens.
living intelligent life I don't lie Don't lie But definitive and we don't imitate enemies Don't try to fight them so we can live in a little light We're all right And I tell you all the secrets I tell you anything, anything, anything you want to know Thank you so much for being with us today. It's been a pleasure to conversate with you in this space. We'd love to see you here again. So please come back. The show premieres every Sunday night at 8 p.m. Central. We can't wait to see you again. Until next time, keep living your life to the fullest. Stay free. And no matter what, don't ever stop being you.